time you do that. Okay, lady. All right. Uh, what'd you say? 21. Let me see what it says here. Oh, um, no, it, it's actually asking you uh, what two distributions can we use? Yeah, so I don't know, the way you said it, it sounds like you have to choose between the two, but those are the two. You basically just gave us all the answer. What two distributions can we use uh, for this? It would be z-score distribution or t-score distribution, yeah. Okay, cool. All right. All right, guys, anybody else have questions? Oh, here's somebody. I'm kind of getting tired, so uh, a couple things. Um, I put you guys in a waiting room, so then I have to go actually click on your name, and I let you in, and I do that to try to keep out uh, the, the bad hombres, the people that might be trying to bomb our little meeting, um, hack it, uh, do terrible things. So I might start next week putting a password with the Zoom link information, so I don't have to do that. So then you'd have to just copy and paste the password. Uh, does anyone have an issue with that? I think so, right? I, yeah, it just kind of sucks that I have to keep an eye on if somebody's trying to come in the door. All right, so that's, we'll see what happens. If I decide that, I'll make it really big and, and a big deal out of it. So you'll know to do that next week. Okay, hold my back. All right, all right. Also, you guys realize we're less than a month away from finals. All right, all right. <clears throat> uh, and there was something else too, and I totally forgot. Oh, well, too bad for me. Anybody have questions from homework stuff? Here's somebody else. No questions, no questions, no questions. Okay. Oh, yes, we're going to do that today. I love it. Read. It's awesome. We're going to talk about type one and type two errors. I like it. So there, there's a few details, and that's one of them. We still haven't talked about have we talked about? Yes, we have. No. Have we talked about p-values yet? Have I finally explained what a p-value is? Crazy ass Jeff? No. Crazy ass Jeff has not done that. Okay. So today we're going to fill in a few details that have been lurking in the background. If you've been doing the homework, you've run up against them. And you're like, I don't know what the hell this is. I don't want to read the book. What the shit? Uh, so today I'm going to explain some of those little details. Let me turn off my, uh, everybody say bye to, bye Toby. That's Toby the T-Rex in the background. Do, 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 bam. Okay, so there's what we're gonna do today. I wanna do what I just said. I wanna fill in some details. And then we're gonna actually do a hypothesis test for percentages. That's the type that we haven't done yet. Um, so. Some of the details I'm gonna fill in relate to the differences in a test for a per, uh, percentage. Um, oh man, I lost one of my markers. Oh, I'll get over it. All right, how's my lighting today? Uh, could be better, could be worse. That's a good place. Um, so, here, come here, everybody come closer. Okay. No mouse, don't do freaky things. All right, okay. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is, um, let's see, do I want to start with type one, type two errors? Let's talk about p-values first. All right. So let's say I do, I have a hypothesis test that I'm working with, right? And let's say uh, the rejection region is 2.326. We've seen that z-score before. Is everybody with me so far? So the rejection region the place that evidence starts is at 2.326, right? So anything above there would reject the null. I mean, this is a good little review. So again, a great review. So the null is the one that thinks it's in here somewhere because the null includes the equals option. Oh, here's somebody trying to come in. Yeah, damn it. Uh, let me say that again. The null, is always the one that thinks it's in here somewhere because the null always includes the equals. So when can we reject what the null says when we get a sample that's out here? 
All right, so now what if I get a sample, and let's say the, C, the Z star, let's say Z star is 2.41. You guys with me? Nothing amazing there. So like right there, can you tell me, would we reject the null or would we fail to reject the null just based on what I've drawn up here? Reject it, get out of here, right? Because again, the null thinks it's here. If we get a sample up there, that's evidence that that's wrong. So let's make that more, uh, let's make that more formalized. Believe it or not, we're gonna make that more formalized. Can somebody tell me what is the area in the tail of this z-score? What is the area right there? What's the area in that tail right there? Can you guys look it up? You're gonna need your z-score chart, and so will I. I should probably get that thing. Come here. Wake up. Oh. This is old, this is old. This is old shit I'm asking you right now. I'm trying to ask you, what's the probability that we get a Z-score greater than 2.41? I want that area right there. I like it, that sounds about right. I don't know, I didn't even look it up yet. 2.41 is 0.992. Yeah, I'm gonna catch up to you. 0.992, that would be down there. Oh, here's somebody wanting to come in. 0.992, so then this is 0 0.008. That is the p-value. Can you guys see that shit? That is the p-value. So the p-value is the area in the tail that your Z star makes, right? The p-value, let me move my light. Let me see, is that better? No glare. The p-value is the area in the tail that your z-star makes. If it was a two-tail test, I would double this to get the p-value. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. All right, that is physically what the p-value is. Let me say that one more time. It sounds like I might ask this on a quiz or something. The p-value is the area in the tail that your Z star makes. That's physically what it is. So kind of more importantly, what does it mean? What, what does it mean conceptually? That is the probability that I get a sample where I did if the mean is correct, if the, if the null is correct. Let me say it like that. If, the, if H naught is correct, there's still a chance I would get a sample out there. So if this is in the right place, if that number from the claim is in the right place, there's still a chance I'd get a, a sample out there. But what's that chance? 0.8%. There's a 0.8% chance that I would do what I just did if that's in the right place. So what's more likely? That's in the right place, or it actually should be in this case higher. Well, what's more likely is it should be higher because it's only a 0.8% chance of what I did happening if that's in the right place. Okay, and if you're paying attention, I know it sounds like I said that five times, and yes, I did. Um, so two main things about the p-value. The p-value is, is directly, physically, the area in the tail of the Z-star, right? And you double it for two tail tests. What does it mean? It's the probability that the null is right, given that we got a sample way out there. So if you only have a 0.8% chance of something being right, I'd say it looks like it's more likely than it's wrong. Okay, how are we doing out there? You guys, I'm always curious if it's like, I don't even want to ask a question because I don't even know what to ask. Is that what's happening? I don't know. That's some weird shit. Uh, so on one level, if I just say find the p-value, you just look up your z-star and get the area in the tail. So real quick, if I had a two-tail test, let's say I have a two-tail test. 
and here's my rejection region. I don't even care what they are. And I get, so it's a two-tail test, and I get a Z star. Oop, let's just do this. It doesn't matter, Jeff. Let's see, I get a Z star of 1.82. Where's that glare coming from? Is it from my screen? Yes. Oh, well, nothing I could do about that. Too bad. So sad. Oh, let's see. Alex, I'm sorry. Whoa, you want some heavy confirmation. Damn. Uh, yes. I almost feel like with that heavy of a confirmation, the universe should explode or something. I am 1 million percent. All right. So let's try this. I got a Z star. Oh, I'm sorry. Dude, immediately I got a mistake. Negative 1.82, obviously, right? I'm trying to say it's down here. Here's the middle. Negative 1.82. Can somebody tell me what the area is in that tail? That isn't the p-value yet. And what's on the other side? I got the freaking Kermit the Frog song in my head. I don't understand. Oh, there, I gotta catch up to you guys. I got a bunch of answers I didn't notice. I haven't even looked it up yet. Negative 1.820344. I love it. So what's the p-value then? It's a two-tail test. So what's the p-value? 0688. Double it. The smaller the p-value is, the more likely H naught is wrong. All right, Rhea, I'm not sure what to make of your question. So what are HO and H1? What are they? Why are they called H? What word are, what word are they standing in for? Why do we call an HO, an H1? Hypothesis, yeah. So there are my two hypotheses. Right? If somebody has an idea, then there exists the opposite of that. I think it's more than seven. Well, I think you're wrong. Well, I think you're wrong means less than or equal to seven. So that's the two hypotheses. I like it. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, cool. I like it. There was something else I was going to say, and now I've forgotten. Uh, it's too bad. Okay. Continuing on. Where's my eraser? There it is. Any other questions about that? So, so on the face of it, all you have to do is look up your Z star. If they ask you for a p-value, look up your Z star, get the area of the tail. If it's a two-tail test, you double it. Now, real quick, let me see. I'm going to say this one last thing. Uh, uh, all right. Let me see. Uh, let's say that alpha is a uh, point, what, Jeff? Uh, 0.05. Yeah, sure. I like it. if alpha is 0.05. Can somebody real quick look up for a two tail test? What would the z score be? So let's say we're using z scores here. What would these z scores be for the rejection region if alpha is 0.05? Can you look it up? You can look it up on the t score chart because we're crazy. 1.96. Can everybody find that right? 0.05. Two tails go all the way to the bottom of this of the Z score chart. So, where is alpha on the picture? What does alpha mean again? What's that symbol mean? Where's alpha on the picture? Where is it? Area in the tails of my rejection region. I love it. So this is alpha right there. That's alpha. So do you see how this is going to be freaky? We already know how to get the answer to a hypothesis test. We look to see where our sample falls, our z-score, right? This didn't make it far enough, did it? We can see that. But if it didn't make it far enough, won't its tail be bigger than this tail? So if my p-value is bigger than alpha, I fail to reject. 
It's actually another way to do this, not comparing Z scores, but comparing areas of tails. If I'm not as far away, my tail is inherently bigger. So how, when do I reject the null? If the p-value is less than alpha, I reject the null. It's the same thing as saying that the Z star is inside. That might have just gone right past you. I'm sorry. I want to show you this, though. I'm so excited. I found this. Um, here we go. Mm, oh, Shaisa, get out of there. I don't want you. Uh, there we go. I'm going to show you the study. So if you've been paying attention at all, uh, can you guys see the study about hydro, uh, hydroxychloroquine? That's what it is. You can say it, Jeff. Yes, yes. Okay, good. Uh, and if you paid any attention at all, this is um, uh, somebody, somebody up in a high office in, in the United States who just happens to have stock in hydroxychloroquine, really like the idea that it might, you know, it might work. Um, and everything that's happened says more than likely it'll kill you before it does any good for you. Uh, I, I forget who it was. Um, but notice this. I'm not going to go through the whole results with you guys, but I want to point out something. Do you see how they keep talking about p-values? So now watch this. I know I'm not going to go through all the, but look, compared to the no HC group, the risk of death from any cause was higher in the HC group. How do they know? Just stay with me. We don't know what HC means. Who cares? In one group, the, the risk of death was higher than the other group. How do they know that that is there's evidence for that? Because look at their p-value. Is their p-value small? Relatively small, 0.03. Yes. Now look over here, but not in this other group. They didn't find evidence in the other group. Look at their p-value. P-value is 0.72. That sucks big time. So in a journal article that uses statistical analysis, you will very, most often you will see p-values flying around. The bigger the p-value, the worse the evidence. The smaller the p-value, the better the evidence. And very often somewhere in this, they will tell you what their alpha is. In real life, they don't, you don't get an alpha. You actually, everybody has their own alpha. I can say, well, 0 0.09, look at this 0 0.09. Eh, that's not really small, right? But then 0 0.03, oh, all right, that's evidence. So we each have our own level of what enough evidence is. That's why they report p-values because then everybody who reads it can make up their own mind. And then some group could actually redo the study. If they're like, I don't trust that, let's redo the study. And that's science, kids. All right, I like it. So the p-value thing is awesome. Now you actually see what it is that tells us like a measure of how strong evidence is. Now another group might do it again and get like for this p-value, they might get a p-value of 0.17 and then like, oh shit, I didn't confirm your findings. So then somebody else needs to do it. And then somebody else needs to do it. We need to confirm findings because the p-value could be just a, 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 a random thing that it happened to be small one time. I've got to do it a few times. All right, how are we all feeling out there? So almost every journal article that references statistical analysis will show p-values because they kick ass. All right, maybe, 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 maybe. So it is kind of a big deal, but I didn't want to talk about p-values too early because we have a lot of shit to get down about hypothesis tests and how they work. But this is a great time to talk about. It. Okay, I'm going to take that away. Boom. So sorry if you had stock in hydroxychloroquine. That was a bad call. Bad call. All right. Um, I think it's still a good drug. I think it's uh, it's used for something else. If that uh, was it, shingles or something. Oh, I'm not gonna. I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not a medical doctor. Um, okay. Let me take this away. Let's talk about types of error real quick. I still haven't done that, right? Okay. Um, so here's the thing. This is what people don't get about statistics. And this is exactly the same reason why I love the shit out of statistics. 
It's the most honest math. You could do everything right in a hypothesis test and be wrong about your conclusion. You just can't. It's just too bad, kids. Um, so what two things, what are the main two possible outcomes of a hypothesis test? I can either reject the null or I can fail to reject the null. That's it. That's the only two things that comes out. So when would it be a mistake? When would rejecting the null be a mistake? When would that be a mistake if what was true in reality? Right? If I reject the null, when is that a mistake? If what is true about the null? If the null itself is actually what? When is it wrong? Yeah. The thing is, in real life, there is no way to know all the data. Right? So there's always a chance that what we do is, is wrong somehow. So we reject the null. We find evidence to reject the null. But in reality, the null is true. That's a mistake. That's called a type 1 error. Type 1 error is to reject a true, become the word true, null. That's a type 1 error. Holy crap. Uh, I got a type three error called can't write. Reject a true null. Let me try to make this English. There we go. So a type two error obviously has to deal with the only other thing that we can do, which is fail to reject. When would it be wrong to fail to reject the null if the null was actually false? So type two error is fail to reject a false profit. No, a false no. Ah, crap, how do you do that? Get in there. Those are approximations of words. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. This is why a lot of people just give up on stats. They're like, you're math and you're not telling me the answer. It's not how math works. But hey, shut up. Statistics is math that mimics, that, that not just mimics, but is part of real life. It's like, all right, this is what I think, but who, uh, who knows, right? That's, that's oh, well, that's, that's, that's how it works. It doesn't mean it's not useful. It gives me ideas about what to try and which way to go and how to make a decision, but it doesn't say this decision is definitely the right one. And if you think anybody can do that for you, stop. <laughs> they can't. Don't drink the Kool-Aid, kids. All right. So here's a, a real quick uh, specific example. Um, hopefully everybody's written these down because they're leaving. Let's say my null is, uh, the mean is at least 11, right? Let's say that's the null. What would a type one error be? A type one error would be, uh, we think, the mean, so remember type one, the way I remember this is type one is the smaller phrase, reject a true, no. Type two is fail to reject a false, no. So type one, I reject this when it's actually true. So we think that the mean is less than 11 when actually the mean is at least 11. That's it, that's it. That's it. Type two error would be, we think that the mean is greater than equal to 11 when actually it's less than 11. That's it. That's all I'm gonna say about it. That's all I'm gonna say about it. You can go read about it. They're really very straightforward. They really, really are. There's only two things you could say in a pasta's test. So of course there's two ways to be wrong then. Okay. All right, that's enough of that, okay. Okay. Um, oh, real quick, real quick, I will do one more. So in a court case, who's trying to prove what in a court case? Who has all the burden of proof? Does anybody know how a court case works? Who's got all the burden of proof in a court case? 
the prosecution, of course. They have a claim. They claim that this guy killed somebody, right? If they don't do a good enough job, this guy can just sit there and go, I arrest your honor. I don't even need defense. They didn't do enough good enough job. So the null is the person is innocent or people or whatever. And the alternate is guilty. So the, you're trying to show evidence that the person is guilty. So what would a type two error be? What would a type two error be? Type two is a longer phrase, fail to reject the null, a false null. So in reality, this is false. In reality, the person is guilty, but we think they're innocent. So if I fail to reject a false no, that is false. So in reality, they're guilty, but we think they're innocent. There you go. So there's a non-mathematical example, right? Of course, which type of error is worse? Type two is, uh, in reality, they're guilty, but we think they're innocent, so they walk. They walk amongst us and maybe kill some more of us. And the other one would be, in reality, they're innocent, but we think they're guilty. And they might be put to death. And that might happen right now. So we maybe we should stop doing that shit. But again, I'm sorry. Make up your own mind about it. Uh, anyway, so you could talk about which type of error would be worse to make and then base your system on that making sure that you minimize the probability that type of error happens. So that's why it's important to know what the types of error are, because then you could try to minimize which error is worse. And that's why alpha changes. And I said this before about getting off your ass in a nuclear power plant, right? The type of error is worse in one direction. So I want to be, I just want to err in that direction, get off my ass early. Okay. All right. So last thing we got to do before we can do an actual problem today. Um, we're about to get into percentage hypothesis tests. So obviously this will not work for us. That was our fourth step. Right? That was our calculate the Z star for sample means. If I have percentages, I don't have any of this shit. I don't have that. I don't have that. I don't have that. I don't have any of that shit. So I need another z-score formula, right? So one thing I want you to realize is it's always, al al always our data minus the supposed amount, right? So I want to see how far away our sample gets from what the supposed real middle is, correct? So uh, the Z star formula, I know you can't see that too well. well. Z star formula for percentages has to have our data minus the supposed real percentage, right? That part, that top part we know. Our data is gonna be P hat. Remember P hat is the percentage from the sample minus the supposed correct percentage. So if I had to claim at least 70% of Grossman students um, are going insane from this shift to online, then P would be 0.7, and then I would go take a sample, right? And uh, have people evaluate it <laughs> and then see what the real percentage is. So, what's missing is what the hell is the standard deviation for that shit? That's what's missing. All right, let me stop for a minute. So, obviously, I can't use a formula with means in it for a problem about percentages. So that's a great place to start. So the funny thing is, it's not really ha ha funny, but um, we already know what goes down here. We already know it. So let me remind you guys. Shema! <laughs> the formula for uh, confidence intervals for percentages, I guess I don't have to go that far. Remember this business? And then here's the formula for uh, means just to kind of put them next to each other. 
The standard deviation for this one is right there. So what's the standard deviation for the percentages? It's going to be in the same place because physically they mean the same thing. They're in the same place in the equation. They have to have the same units in a way. They have to have the same physical meaning. So this is the standard deviation for, I know you can't see that, for this situation. That, because we use, look at me pointing, I'm pointing at the screen. I want you to guys, I'm going to admit that. Right now I'm pointing at the screen. All right, here we go, Jeff. This is what we use here, isn't it? That's what we use here. So that is what we use here. The difference is I don't put little hats on them. And I know, I know you're all going insane. I know you are. Let me push this back a little bit. Because the P hat is an estimate for P. If I know P, I will use it. It's the same way like S is an estimate for sigma. If I know sigma and S, screw S. I'm going to use sigma because it's S is an estimate for it. If I know it, of course I'm going to use it. Maybe. That is the formula for Z star in a percentage hypothesis test. All right, now we're ready to try this out. Or at least I'm going to proclaim that, pretend like it's true. All right, I'm going to get this ready for us. Get over there. Let me get my hydro hydroxychloroquine. Man, that's hard to say. All right. Bum, bum, bum. Pew! Uh, can you guys see a problem about Chicago? Where's my chat? Come here. Chat, hello. There you are. Oh, thank you. Yes, okay. All right. Let me get turned around here fully. Okay, here we go. Uh, so, take a minute and try to look at, read through this, and then I'll catch up to you. Now, in this problem, I'm being remarkably nice. I used the word claim. Holy shit. So normally, you're going to have to read through a little bit, see where somebody believes something, somebody feels something, somebody thinks some way. And this, I'm just saying claim. So what the hell is a claim? Can somebody figure out what the claim is in mathish? There should be no mu, right? This is not talking about means. This is talking about percentages. Let's see. Yes, at most. I love it. So the claim is, let me write. Let me write. The claim is P. Holy crap. Let me turn that down. P. I'll pick it up here in a minute. At most is less than or equal to. 0.55, so several good things there. Always change percentages into decimals before you try to use them mathematically. All right, let me, let me put a zero in there just to make it more clear. Pop! Okay, let me stop for a second. That should not feel very different at all. Just make sure you use the right symbol. If you're talking about percentages, don't put no mu down there. I like it. Now, same, same as always. Which one does that go into? HO or H1? Where am I going to put it? What do you call me? Oh, sorry. Yeah. I'm um, oh, sorry. I'm going to say that joke almost every time. So I apologize in advance. Um, it's got to go there because it has an equal sign. So then what's the H1 going to be? I'm going to change in a minute. Don't freak out at me. Great. It's got to be the opposite, right? Two old men in a coffee shop. They disagree about every damn thing. So how many tail tests will this be? One tail. I love it. One tail because it's greater than. There's a direction to it. So far, it feels the same as always. I just had to use the letter P. Now, there is a difference in part B, and some of you guys still don't quite get this. What kind of problem do I need to check if N is greater than 30? A problem involving what? Statistics. No, come on. The problem involving 
what? When is n greater than 30 the right thing to check for normality? A problem involving means. When I have a problem about means, then I check n greater than 30. What do I check for proportions, for percentages? There's two things I have to check. NP and and Q. I love it. So, what's N in this problem? I like it. Thank you, Ray. So, the equal two parts important too. N is 996. I love it. People look at that 594. That's not N. That's not all of them. So, 996. And what's P? Mm, this is a good question. What's you don't have to do any work. If you're doing work to figure out what P is, you're doing it wrong. What's P? Anybody? Nobody. Five, five. Yes. So the, the point of a hypothesis test is assuming the number from the HO is right. So therefore, from there on, we know P is 0.55. We're assuming it's right, and we're seeing if it leads to a contradiction. That's the whole thing about hypothesis tests. You guys doing all right? Hopefully. Uh, I'm trying to, oh shit and a half. Just never enough time for anything. So that equals, what is that? I don't even know, a thousand something. No, 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 Jeff, not a thousand. Uh, 500, what is it? 547.8. So then NQ equals 986 times 0.45, of course. And that will be 448.2. Is that true? Yeah, all right. And they're both at least five. So what does that mean? That means that it, this is a, this, get out of there, 55. Yes, it's normal enough. I love it. Kick ass. Alpha, all right, so continuing on. Oh, let me see, let me answer the question. Yes. So with these problems, T scores never come into play. Either it's normal and you use Z scores or it's not normal and you don't use anything. You might remember that there were two confidence interval formulas for X bar, Z and T, but there was one formula for P. Right, one confidence interval formula for P had it had a Z in it. They never used T scores. T scores were invented for means. Get out of here. Um, so what about my rejection region? We already know it's going to be up. See, it's greater than right. So I know it's going to be get in there up here somewhere. Alpha's point oh oh five. Oh, where did I get point four five from? Oh, if. Uh, if P is 0.55, Q has got to be one minus that, always. Oh, uh, it's just not the way we set things up, Re. T scores, the math behind the T scores uh, is built on using means. Now, there's almost always more to the story behind certain things. And if I was teaching a stats class where everybody had taken calculus, that I could get deeper into some of these things. And anyway, anyway, so yeah, there's more to the story behind that. But yes, the really easy answer is T-scores were hardwired built on assuming it's a means problem. Um, where am I at? Oh, so one tail test, 0 0.005 Z-score. So you can look at the T-score chart, one tail test, 0 0.005. Why are we using a T-score chart? Because we're crazy. So it's that first column. And if you just don't stop, you'll get the Z-score. 2.576. All right, you got to get this out of my system. Ain't no party like a Z-score party because a Z-score party don't stop. So if you don't stop, you'll get a Z-score. If you stop at a degree of freedom, you'll get a T-score. We talked about that before, and I've already forgotten what it was. Two five seven six, and if I want to put that into words, if my z star is less than oh sorry, what am I thinking about? Is greater than two point five seven six? We can reject the null support 
the high. Ah, I'm trying to leave enough time to do something. All right, any questions about that? Sorry, I don't want to. Let me let me shade this in a little bit. Let me see if it'll let me. Ah, oh crap! Overdid it. Jeff, you'll be fine. Jeff, you're wasting time now. Too bad. All right. All right. I'm so happy I did that. All right. What does a level of significance signify? It's the same as alpha. Yep. And now we see why the level of significance is kind of like what your P value has to show. It's how significant evidence is required for this problem. That's why it's also called the level of significance. I like it. So let's see, I'm gonna do this kind of quickly just because I wanna be mean. So N is 996, X is five, what was it? Let me go up there, 594. Anybody got what the P hat is? Be really careful, P hat's not 0.594. It almost is, but of course to get P hat, you gotta take the ratio, right? That's how you get a percentage. So it should be 0 0.596, is that right? Yay! Notice how I don't give a shit about Q hat. I don't give the first shit because look at the formula. How many things have a hat on it? Just P. So if I do this, it's gonna be my data, my data minus the supposed middle, which is 0.55. Become a 0.55. Hard. Why do I have to be sometimes a perfectionist? Okay, divided by the square root of P times Q divided by N. Okay, that's a yummy formula right there. Oh shit. Now two things, two things. Be sure you use P and Q, not P hat and Q hat down there. And secondly, be sure you plug it in the calculator correctly, right? What time is it? Damn it. Time keeps on slipping. All right, let me see. What year is it? Oh, all right, sorry. 0.55 times 0.45 divided by all right, what do you guys get? Anybody get it? Oh, shit. I didn't even get it yet because I can't type or anything. That's better. Anybody? Yes. This is what it should look like if you're doing it right. Put the top in parentheses and make sure the whole bottom is under the square root symbol. So 2.92. I like it. 2.92. Let me put that in, in red. Yeah, red. And then, so where's that? That's way the shit up here, right? I want that in red. Red, yeah, all right, Galloway. So there's my Z star. <laughs> it had a rough night, just leave it alone. Now I already know what the answer is. What's the answer here? Can we reject a null or did we fail to reject a null? Anybody? Yeah, we totally rejected the shit out of that. It got way in the rejection region, right? We friend zoned the hell out of that thing. So, sorry, it's a bad joke. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So right there, we already know what the answer is, but I'm gonna add one extra step on here. So it feels like one extra step for us. So we know we can do this, which means we can also do this. I have to worry about what language to use in a minute. Anybody can find the p-value, please. Just gonna let me do this. Let me see. It's the area in the tail of our Z star. How much time is it? Okay, maybe I can do this. Yes. So if you look at 2.92, you should get 0.009 to 00. Let me do it again. 0.9982, right? And then one minus that is 0 0.0018. Do, is that small? Would you say that's small? Yeah, if you're reasonable, you would say that's small. Get out of there. Stop it. 
darn, stop it. It'll, I'll work with it. I will work with it. I'll do it live. There we go. Get no, ah. Dad gum it. Okay. So that's the p-value. It wasn't a two-tail test, so I didn't have to double it. If it was a two-tail test, I'd have to double the area to get what the official p-value is. And then my conclusion is going to sound exactly the same as before. We have, we made it in there, so we have found sufficient evidence. Let me write the whole word out. Now, what was the claim? The claim was HO, so I want to use this language reject the claim. We found sufficient evidence to reject the claim that, and then plagiarize. Uh, at most 55% of Chicago people have an unfavorable view. Oh my God. 55% of Chicago, Chicago peeps have an unfavorable favor man i could be president just based on this unfavorable view of the local police all right i think that's what i said okay. all right let me see if i can do this ah oh, shit there's so little time all right i'm gonna do it anyway so everybody got that oh shit sorry that should be 55. okay all right, desperately want to do this. Um, is this what I was going to do it with? I can't remember now. Oh, well, maybe I won't do it. Barf. <laughs> so everybody, real quick, read through this problem. You can all see that problem, right? Read through this problem. And do the first two steps. I'm going to try to do this. There's something I want to try to do more of during our meetings is to allow you guys to talk to each other. And some of you guys are like, I'm okay with, with not Jeff. I'm not even at my computer right now. I'm in bed. So don't do that. Cause then you'll find out that I'm actually in bed. Not too bad. I'm going to do it. Write down what you can about the problem and then try to do the first two steps. By the way, this is in your email. I sent this handout to your email this morning. I didn't think about doing it earlier than that, but I figured we'd all see it anyway. Okay. So hopefully you guys gotten the first two steps maybe yes okay what i'm gonna do i'm gonna stop sharing so hopefully you got enough information written down i'm gonna break you up into groups and i want you just to discuss this for a few just a few minutes let me see how many i should do all right you should end up with uh three to four people in your room so when you see a link on your screen click it Go away, go to your room. Do you see a link on your screen? Oh shit, not yet. Now you should, sorry, now go away. <laughs> I'll learn how to do that correctly. If you don't go to the room, then I'm worried. King is in there all alone. There we go, now he's got somebody. Brian, Spencer, Haley, are you out there? Brian, Spencer. Okay, I got everybody except Brian. Brian! Wait, who else is not in there? Garrett! Grace! Garrett, Grace, come back! Where are you? Okay, is that everybody? Grace? Grace? Grace. Now, so it's still recording. So all you guys are going to watch this later. Maybe it's just me going, Grace. <laughs> Apparently Grace has left the building. All right. I'll survive. It's just one person, I guess. Relatively, that's all right. 
Maybe she had to take a break. Grace! 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 Can't do that. Well, all right, and I'll wait. Bum, 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 bum. I should have really kept track of how long they're in there for. Oh, we got some time. All right, I'll let them stay in for a few minutes. Grace! Grace Huntsman! Hello! All right, I'm calling you out. I'm sorry. Oh, well. Um. Oh man, got a cold in the time of COVID-19. Everybody wants to stay away from me and that's fine with me. There's a song right on the spot, all just for you guys. Here's some Kermit the Frog. Why are there so many songs about rainbows? All right, that's a terrible Kermit. How about uh, Louis Armstrong? Um, I see skies of blue, clouds of white, the bright blessed day, the dark sacred night. Okay, sorry, that's terrible. You guys are gonna see that. Oh, I don't care. That's my go-to first karaoke song. All right, I'm gonna close these rooms maybe because I seem to be going insane. Everybody's coming back now. Y'all coming back. Forty second now. Anybody hated that? Let's see. Thirty seconds. What's freaking me out is it is telling me I am the instructor and I am a student. I am on my screen twice. This is freaking me a little bit out. I'm a terrible student. I haven't done any homework. Let's see, about eight seconds. And then everybody's going to be back. Two, one, watch out. Ah, they're all coming back. Everybody make it back. Right. Let me know if you're not back. Ah, sorry. All right. <laughs> um, all right. So I, I want to try to work that out better, obviously, and, and, and put that in. Uh, even if you absolutely hated that, I think it's still one huge thing that's missing is the interaction with other students that you normally would get a chance to, to have, right? Um, even if you don't talk about statistics the whole time, it's still good to check in with other humans that you used to sit next to in class. I, I randomized the assignments. I don't know who you guys ended up with. Uh, also, did you guys see the broadcast I sent out? Did everybody see the message I sent out? Did anybody see the message I sent out? So there is a way at the bottom of the screen to say call, I can't remember what it says now, call the instructor or request help. I can't remember what it says. So then I could just come into your room. That sounds creepy. Come into your room and, and, and just be there to help. And then I can leave and then somebody else can call me and whatever. All right. So I'm going to try to incorporate that more. So let's, let's finish this up so we can end today. Where has this gone now? This is not here anymore. Why are you not an option for me? Hold on. Do, 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 do. There it is. All right. So.
What'd you guys get? What's the claim in Mathish, please? Yes, so the claim is, you can see right here, test the claim that the proportion is the same as, so the claim is that the proportion of students, the population proportion is the same as, what was it, 0.845? Yes. So of course, where's it gonna go? HO or H1? HO. All right, I'm not gonna make my normal joke there. I'll let, I'll let you be for a little while. 845, because it's got an equal sign, right? Sign, right? Whoop. I heard myself, freaky. So then what's H1? It's gotta be P, see how did I decide to do this? Not equal to 0.845. Yeah, I like re is equal not, and I, I'm not equal, I, either way. So it's gonna be a one or a two tail test. Damn. Okay, so he's like two, all right, all right, all right sorry. Um, so definitely a two tail test because it's not equal to, meaning it could be above or below, right? We're probably not gonna quite finish this problem, that's all right. How did anybody figure out if it's normal enough? It is, it just is. So NP is, where'd N go? 322 times 0.845, uh, I don't know, what is that? 272.09, sure. That is greater than or equal to five, and then NQ is 322 times 0 0.155. Where'd I get 0.155, by the way? Just made it up, just totally making shit up. Yeah, just one minus that. P and Q always make one no matter what clothes they're wearing or if they're naked, right? So these two are naked P's and naked Q's, so they add up to be one. Uh, so the answer is yes. So therefore we can use these scores. All right, I think the last step we'll do today is the rejection region. Yes, alpha's 0.10. Um, we have a two tail test, right? And we can use Z scores. Alpha's 0 0.10, we have a two-tail test. Oh, shisa. Why? Two-tail test. Draw the line. What happened to this line? Okay. Yes, so if you look that up, uh, what was it again? Yeah, you will get 1.6 for five. I like it, negative one, six for five. Und positive one, six, four, five. Let's see if I can lift this guy up. Just, just, it's all right, Jeff. All right, I'll stop. And that's the rejection region. Give it a little shade. Okay, so in English, if my Z star ends up being less than negative 1.645 or greater than 1.645, what can we do? If it's less than negative one six four five or greater than one six four, we can reject the null. No, my God. <laughs> Which also means support the high. All right, so we'll finish this problem up. You can finish it up if you want to now. We'll finish this up first thing next time. Oh, I forgot to say this. So obviously you guys remember Thursday's a quiz. Thursday's quiz is on chapter nine. I decided that next week we will have another quiz and it will have at least, so, so this Thursday's quiz will focus on means because we just officially today did the percentages, right? So there's only gonna be questions about hypothesis tests for a mean. That's gonna be on this Thursday's quiz. And then probably Tuesday, we'll have a quiz for percentage hypothesis tests. And then maybe some type error questions. Everybody understand that? Or does anybody not understand that? Let me ask it that way. No, Alex, uh, remember, 9.5 uh, is the one that has the full hypothesis test. 9.1, 9.2, 9.3, 9.4, they deal with little pieces of it. So to be honest, this is on all of chapter nine. 
but just the ones that dealt with the means. Uh, I don't know yet, Hannah. I'm going to decide. I might make Chapter 10 extra credit. I think about it. I'll see how I feel next time I think about it. Sounds good, Ari. Right. You don't even know yet. Uh, I can make it worth double. No, I won't do it. Um, all right, that's enough. Anybody need to hang out? Anybody have any questions? I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Stop looking at my screen. God, I look really crazy today. How's it going, kids? Oh, no. You can't even see it? Ah, oh, shit. I'm sorry. I locked it. You can't even see results? Is that true? Is that nobody's able to see their quiz six results? Oh, somebody's got a real question. No, let me see. I want to make sure I understand. Alex, you said, yeah, you can't see your quiz six results. Is that... You did see your quiz six, Andrea. But Alex, you didn't, and Re, you did. Uh, okay, this is really freaky. Emily, let me see. You can see what you... Emily Fenwick, quiz six. Oh crap, did I pick the right place? If you're good, you can head out. Let me see, Emily Fan. Where are you? There you are. Oh, you can't, so that's the question I have. Click on quiz comments and it should pop up, I see. I could unlock it, there's no real reason for me to lock it. I just, some of my other classes, I was getting these quizzes pop up out of nowhere that was way late. And I'm like, no, no, it's 12 days late. So I can unlock it so there's no problems. It looks like Hannah's got the way that you can make it work. But I'll just unlock it so that um, everybody can fully see what they need to, yes. Thank you for letting me know that. So I'm still getting used to little details about Canvas. So don't just sit there and go, I guess it's the way he wants it to be, jackass. No, just let me know. Uh, let me see. So I think I locked a few things, didn't I? Somebody else had an actual, let me see. Oh, 9331. Where did I put my book at? Oh, it's back there. Oh man, 9331. Why are there so many? Let me see, you are performing. Oh, they come from which distribution? They come from binomial, because it's PQ, right? And then when we do the check about NP and NQ, then we check to see if we can use a normal. So that's the answer to Ree's question. Uh, you asked it again, okay, because I was taking too long, I understand. Let me open up, oh shit, how do I do this easily? I guess there's no easy way to do this. I'm gonna edit, okay, crap. All right, you guys can head out if you don't have any questions. I'm just gonna do this real quick. How do I get rid of this damn thing? Do I just delete it? Yeah. <laughs> Emily, if you're still out there, let me see, is she still out here? Yeah, go see if you can see your quiz six. Why are there so many songs about rainbows? Let me see, yeah, that's not locked. I think, was that the, oh, quiz five and quiz four are locked also. Shaisa. Oh, this sucks, all right. That's what I hate about Canvas. It's just everything you want to do takes like a minimum of five steps. Oh, what's on the other side? Number 30. All right. Oh. You're from a can you find out the MB is less than five? What must you do? Oh, yeah. So very often, 
Read, if NP is less than five, which part of that can you change? So the P comes from the claim. So therefore, the only thing you can change is N. And so you have to make N bigger. So if you want to put that in English, you have to pick a larger sample. Until N, P, and N, Q are both bigger than or equal to five. Sure. All right, let me see. I'm going to close things down. I don't see any other questions. And Alex just eventually, someday he wants to see who's the last one to leave, but not today, my friend. I'm closing it down. Bye, everybody who's still out there. Bye. Angel is still there. Sure is. Who would it have been? We'll never know.